I moved to Coolbelup about five years ago and I started using this little bit of bushland for my recreation, just for my daily walk or daily run um, or just somewhere to kind of uh, relax and rest. I got really close to spending a lot of time in the wetlands as well, um, just taking my kids down there to play and I realised that it was all part of the road reserve and that, um, that the Barnett government was you know, still planning on building this outdated road so um, I decided to kind of do a little bit of investigation into who was doing what about it and I met Kate Kelly and yeah, started getting involved. I had the best biology teacher in high school who said to each of us, I want you to go down and find a place that you can revisit over the year and mark out an area that you'll be able to observe the changes. So I instantly chose that area around North Lake, Bibra Lake there and watched it season after season as I was growing up in formative years and it, I became very close to it and really appreciated all of the diversity that was there and all of the changes that were there. It was such a tonic. It's more than that, you know, to, to see the creatures has taken eons to evolve the way they have. You know, the little tiny insects that are made just for those plants have taken centuries and thousands of years and millennia to develop that way. And the birds whose beaks just made to fit the curvature of those flowers. It's phenomenal. You know, these are the things that we need to protect, but how can we protect it if the government is not going to listen to us? So now is a time where we all have to get up, stamp up, step up and stand up and look after what belongs to us. Because if we don't, everything will perish inside of it, even us. You've stolen this land! You can't keep on taking from this land anymore. Um, there was a point where the fences came down and we walked onto the work site to surround the compound where um, you were locked onto a machine in there and there was, Jan was also locked onto another machine to kind of stop work. And it was a really euphoric moment for about a thousand people who really wanted to take some, some action. It's no surprise the way the media coverage is. You know, it doesn't show that we are non-violent. It doesn't show about the importance of the species that are endangered. It doesn't show the, that the United Nations has, has, has stated that this area, the Banksy woodlands or on the Swan Coastal Plain, need protecting. And I said to the police officers, I know you really don't want to do this. We can negotiate this peacefully. I'd really request that you stop pushing people in the back. There's, a, there's, a, there's an old lady, elderly lady here who's getting, you know, um, really hurt. So please, can you stop? Um, and we can work out a better way of making sure that you can do your job and, and we can peacefully protest. About five minutes later, somebody said, yeah, you can come over here and, and, and speak to the sergeant. So I followed them and as I walked away, I sort of said to them, you're not going to arrest me, are you? And she turned around and grabbed me and said, you're under arrest for obstruction and trespass. So she moved me away from the crowd of people where no one could see that happening. And then I got put in, a, put in the back of a duty van and, and taken to the, to the police station. And I was, yeah, I was arrested and charged. There's so much to lose. The Aboriginal significance of that area is, is a, enormous value to the people and to us as part of the heritage um, as far as the endangered species that are there as part and as well the beautiful area that provides so much so much um, restoration to people people feel rejuvenated it's good for mental health it's good for physical health it's good for family life to be able to go and visit those places